interestingly enough, uh, I took my emergency medical technician many moons ago, and um, we actually studied, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it until just now, we had studied self-hypnosis, and, uh, and, and a little bit later we'll talk about inner voice, but avoiding words like pain with patients and using words like discomfort or, um, you know, w w when you approach a patient, particularly after a traumatic accident, you tell them, look, you know, the worst is over now. We're here. Yes. We'll take it from here, you know. And so words really, really matter. And I hadn't thought of that until you had just mentioned it. So, uh, you know, so so yeah. you, even when you get into that, is that something that's, it sounds like that's a legitimate kind of approach to, to interacting with patients or, or anybody. It, it is. Um, I actually really changed how I practiced as an anesthetist when I realized this because I one of the things I had observed and I didn't really know the correlation and now it's more important than ever is in the mid 90s the Joint Commission really jumped on this bandwagon of like every three to four hours you have to ask patients about pain and you have to use pain scales well pain is a four letter word it's like telling you to not think of a pink elephant right. you gotta think of it before you cannot think of it and I observed a pattern with my patients where I could take them to the recovery room and they're completely comfortable at peace. And about the third time the recovery room nurse asked them, are you in pain? Are you in pain? Well, they're taking their attention to where they had surgery and they notice they're uncomfortable. So of course now they're in pain. So our words really do create, it doesn't matter where, we are what we're doing if we're focusing and this comes back to you know you're talking about your audience's leadership it comes back to focusing on the solution and not the problem 